We all have dreams, and we'd all like to reach for the stars. Society advises us to not settle for the low-hanging fruits, but to reach for what we could call the high-hanging fruits. High-hanging fruits are ultimate, ambitious goals and dreams that are very promising, but are extremely difficult to attain. I'm sure that your loved ones, your parents and friends, have encouraged you to not settle, to be all you can be, to reach your full potential and aim for those high-hanging fruits. Indeed, society bombards us with empowering messages, inspiring us to aim high, claiming that with enough willpower, coupled with hard work, we can reach any high-hanging fruit that we set our minds to. Just look at Jimmy Cliff's famous song as an example. You can get it if you really want to. Or Eminem's Lose Yourself, where he concludes the song with the following line. You can do anything that you set your mind to. Yet all of these messages that society bombards us with should be taken with a grain of salt. Blind motivation and sole focus on willpower to reach our goals may ultimately set us up for failure in the long run. Why? Well, because there is a dark side to reaching for the high-hanging fruits that no one likes to talk about. There are traps along the way that we are not prepared for because they are taboo. So let's talk about the dark side of the high-hanging fruit. I discovered the dark side of the high-hanging fruit the hard way, which is what motivates me to speak here at this TED Talk today. My high-hanging fruit was an ambition that I had since I was a little boy. As long as I could remember, I loved being in the water. I considered myself an aqua boy, as water was my element. I already knew since the age of around six years old that I wanted to be an Olympic swimmer. Those rings were my high-hanging fruit. So I swam throughout my school years in Switzerland, having numerous success. I then had academic success, where I was able to move to Vancouver and was able to complete my four years bachelor program in three years. I felt like the sky was the limit. Looking at all of this success, I decided, okay, let me interrupt my academic career for now and focus solely on reaching my high-hanging fruit. So, I decided to move down to the Florida Keys, where I was able to train with one of the most decorated Olympians of all time. I felt like I was on a road towards success. But then, everything changed. I started to develop problems as my body was failing me. My knees were aching as I started to have tendonitis, so I was not able to train efficiently. Despite all of this, I said, I'm just going to motivate myself, keep pressing on, and to bombard myself with this positive thinking and these quotes. Some of these quotes went like this. Well, you can get it if you really want to. Forget your pain. Press on, because pain is temporary, but glory is permanent. Just do it. There are no excuses. I even came up with my own motivational quote. You see, as a Swiss citizen, I once looked at our national flag and said, huh, well, I just have to think positive. I mean, it's right there. We have a big plus for crying out loud. So I took all of this motivation to pump myself up and to go to swimming competitions. Because you see, in order to qualify for the Olympics, I had to swim a qualifying time at an official swimming competition. But needless to say, from my positive motivation, I was so tunnel visioned, focusing on my goal, that I neglected the fact that my body was further deteriorating. I didn't just have problems now with my knees, but also my right shoulder, my elbows, and then with my neck. 
it literally became absurd because I swam looking like this. Going to these competitions was very hard for me. It was bittersweet because I really wanted to attain that qualifying time to be able to reach for my high hanging fruit. But yet, as you can see, many times my coach had to motivate me because other swimmers and other coaches, they laughed at me saying, how is it possible that you can even swim? You're not going to make it, just go home. But I took that quote, go hard or go home, and I chose to go hard. So I told myself, I am still going to make it. Just keep that tunnel vision, and I will surely make it if I have enough willpower. But at this competition, which was the Swiss National Championships in Erlikon in Zurich, I failed. And in further competitions, I failed. After failed attempt, after failed attempt, and after a failed attempt, it all boiled down to one final opportunity, one final shot to make it for the upcoming Olympics. The night before that race, I'll never forget that night because I was given a phone call from a friend saying that our good friend of ours in the Florida Keys had just died and that he left me a note saying, Go for it. Show them your worth. Show them that despite all of your injuries, you still can make it, that you can attain glory. Those words resonated with me so much. They resonated with me because I remember the last memory was both of us just sitting in my car where he motivated me, telling me to just seize this last opportunity. He looked me dead in the eyes and started to sing Eminem's Lose Yourself saying, look, if you had one shot or one opportunity to seize everything that you've ever wanted in one moment, would you capture it or just let it slip? Using that memory, I pumped myself up. I told myself that I'm going to swim my hardest and the best and that I was going to make this qualifying time. So I got up on the blocks, felt completely ready to go, pushed off and swam the hardest that I ever have in my life. But as I, but as I touched the wall and looked back at the clock, I realized that I did not attain my swimming qualifying time. I was completely powered out. And right then and there, I had to listen all of the doctor's recommendations that they have given to me. I had been ignoring them time and time and time again. Their verdict was clear that I should not continue to swim at such a high level. And as I said, I was completely powered out. And this is what I refer to as the dark side of the high hanging fruits. You see, it's not the failure itself which we all know can happen when we take risks. It's the fact that if you give your all to an endeavor, by definition, there is no energy left at that moment in time to move on to your next life chapter. Let me explain it in another way. If you had any energy left after trying to reach for your high hanging fruit, then you simply didn't give it your all. So months after this competition, I asked myself, how am I supposed to get out of this burnt out state that I found myself in? I felt completely powered out because I was so tunnel vision thinking that I was a complete failure. But I asked myself, well, successful people, they've reached for their high hanging fruits, they have failed, and yet they've been able to pick themselves up and keep on moving. So the question is, how do you turn a zero energy wiped out state of mind into continuing your life journey in a, in a positive way and in a successful way? Well, I didn't know the answer, but life goes on. So thank God that I had my academic credentials for my bachelor's that I just fell back on. 
So I decided to move to Edinburgh and study ecological economics at the University of Edinburgh at the master's level. But that didn't help me. I still felt completely powered out. It was hard for me to get rid of the negative emotions of me thinking that I was a complete and utter failure because my knees were a constant reminder of what I considered a shameful past. But then, slowly, something started to change. I realized that I was just so focused on my goal, well, the fact that I didn't make it, that made me think that I was a complete and utter failure. And I didn't focus on all of the skills and knowledge that I had acquired during my swimming endeavor. I discovered that the skill of perseverance that is so innate in athletes now paid off in all of my university projects and tasks as I was able to complete them with great love for perfection. I also didn't realize the fact that because I was living in the Florida Keys, living in a maritime ecosystem, I had first time knowledge about sustainability challenges like coral reef bleaching, because I didn't just swim in the pool, I swam also in the oceans. And seeing this firsthand, all of the challenges and all the theories that we were learning in school, it just started to click while other people had to internalize it. It was only then when I started to focus on these skills and knowledges that I had acquired along the way that provided the turnaround in my life. So with this focus now of realizing the benefits of reflecting on the skills and knowledges, I vowed then and there to one, never slip back into this tunnel vision mindset to the point where I would think that my achievement is solely dependent on a goal. And two, that I would always find, appreciate, and capitalize on all of the skills and knowledge that I had acquired in my endeavors, in the past and in the future. But this realization didn't come easy to me. This is what I call journey orientation, and I don't think it doesn't I don't think it comes easy to any of us. You see, a society defines success primarily on tangible achievements like goals reached. We are prone to neglect the true value of skills and knowledge that we have acquired along any endeavor. And this is why I believe that it is so difficult, but we should get into the habit because Successful people, I believe, they define themselves on what they've learned, not a society that defines them on the fact that they've reached the goal. So using them as an example, I believe that we all should define ourselves by what we have learned along our journey, rather than just a goal that we've reached or that we have not reached. I also believe that if we have reached the goal, yes, Congratulations, but at the same time, do not be seduced by hubris because there are many factors to success. And at the same time, if you have not reached a goal, do not let yourself become derailed because you need to move on. And the only way to move on in a positive way is to look back at the skills and knowledges that you have acquired so that will allow you to propel yourself forward in a more successful way. So from all of this, I would like to summarize it as the following. The goal can fail you. It is a possibility and we all know that. But the lessons learned along the journey will never fail you if you make journey orientation, which I define as finding, appreciating, and capitalizing on the skills and knowledge in any endeavor to propel you forward and you have to make this a continuous habit in your life. So now I look at my dreams differently. And I invite you to look at your dreams with the mindset of being journey-oriented. Thank you very much. And this is my note to self to you.